Hey, 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 what's going on? I do apologize for that, but the show must go on. Don't know what happened, but listen, every time there's always something that's trying to intervene with something greatness. Two collaborations coming together is something great. And for some reason, the internet or Instagram wanted to say, nope, not tonight. But guess what? We rebuke you in the name of Jesus. So, again, this is your girl Kwamea, but for those that do not know how to pronounce my name, you can call me Q Kwa or either Queen. I'm your ho ho I'm a, I am your host from Pillar Talk with the T podcast. And again, as I was stating, and <laughs> tonight's show is going to be another amazing one because it is long overdue that both of the queens, both of the cues from the podcast world is coming together. We're collaborating together and bringing you this dynamic duo of a show that's called Giving Too Many People, um, to Giving Toxic, Giving Toxic People Too Many um, Passes. So, of course, as I always say, that this is more your platform as well as mine. So please engage. Please make sure you share. Please make sure you've got any questions, put it in your comments, your concerns, or whatever in the building. Everyone come in and everyone please engage tonight because again, tonight is going to be an amazing epic one because again, as I say, this has been way overdue and now it's happening. Now we made it happen. Both of the queens of the Q's has come together tonight on this Monday amazing night, giving you an epic worldwide whirlwind episode. So let me get my girl in the building. Hey, hey. Yes, yes. <laughs> ah! Hey, y'all. Hey, Queen. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Oh. Okay, there we go. I just had to turn up my phone. <laughs> yes, honey. It is way overdue. We finally end up coming together. Yes, yes. The, the cues spot. <laughs> Yes. So listen, for my listeners, my viewers, and people that don't know you, just introduce yourself, let them know what you do, what you basically bring, the gift and talent and artistry you bring into this world called life. All right. So hey, y'all, bring you much love from the South. I am Quabila or QB, which is Q-U-E-B-E-E, -E -E, um, Quabila, uh, the, from the Q-Spot podcast. And so I am so excited to do this topic um because we all have run into a lot of toxic people and they come in different shapes and forms mm -hmm. so i can't wait to get into the different types like i've been doing my research and like i like to have notes and stuff so <laughs> yes i'm ready to get it yes absolutely so for those of you guys that don't see the caption is basically tonight's show is giving toxic people too many freaking passes like we and we all experienced it and of course as you know q i love this q also love to do her research like the dive in deep making sure i'm coming correct with my message so of course i looked up toxic people and a definition they give they say a toxic person is anyone whose behavior acts ne acts negativity and upset to your life many times people who are toxic are dealing with their own stresses traumas you will always have to um defend yourself to this person you never feel fully comfortable around them and you continually feel bad about yourself and their presence Woo! And then, I, that's heavy yes and it seems like the the nicer you are the the more good you possess within you the more negative people or negative energy tries to enter into your space. Um, there's actually a, you know, you know what's sad when this topic um, has led people to write books and books on top of books mm. of toxic people. So there's this book called Toxic People, The Rules of the Game, How to Identify and Deal with Toxic, Irrational, and Difficult People in Your Life. And so on the back of the book, there's this little saying that, um, if you are the type of person who cares very much about others and little about yourself, you are bound to keep the company of toxic people. It's like they just know who to leech on to, who to latch on to, mm -hmm. and all of your positivity out of you. Mm -hmm. and, and it's crazy because I'm telling you that 
I, I know about us just having this conversation and we even just at the beginning brink of it and me doing my research, I know I had toxic people recycling in and out of my life. I know because when you have that feeling where you're drained, literally drained, you're pouring every being of your energy into this person and you feel like you don't have anything back. You have to prove yourself all the time to this person you it's just so many different things so they also say that there's different telltale signs to be able to know when you're dealing with a toxic person and one of them is being emotional manipulation and <laughs> <laughs> look at your face Go ahead. Go ahead. So, listen, I had this experience, and I even witnessed other people who had this experience as well. And my thing is, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I didn't say that. You, I could sit there and say, there's fried rice on the pot. You would think I sit there and say that. I, you, they're turning around. Oh, you threw the fried rice on me. I did not say that. That's not what I said. So, have you experienced this as well, <laughs> Oh, child, I've experienced, like, I'm looking at this list, and I found a list, and it's seven types. So you can break it down six, seven, however many types. Mm -hmm. And a narcissist, that's, like, a number one type of person we in encounter. Um, someone, it's like they throw the rock and hide their hand. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of almost ties into the victim as well. But the narcissist is one of those, they act like they didn't do anything wrong. And they, then they flip the script and make you look like the bad person and make you feel bad for standing up for yourself. Like, what the, what the, what? <laughs> you know? Exactly. Oh. So, yeah, narcissists, I've dealt with them. And then they don't like to apologize. And once you lay out all the facts and the figures and show them where they were wrong, mm -hmm. and they're like, okay, well, yeah, but they will not apologize. They just, they don't think they did anything wrong. Oh, that and that's crazy that you say that because they say they are very unapologetic. Like, there's no way they will apologize. They will feel like, um, they would basically keep going again, manipulating you, hovering you with manipulation as for them to revert what you think was wrong, for them to reverse it, like, oh, that wasn't wrong. You right. And it's like, you're not about to sit here and edify my experience when I just seen what I seen and I heard what you said and I seen what you did. Yeah. So, but they do that. And it's like, it didn't have you feel like you're crazy. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes. oh. And then another one is they are very dishonest. Now that's a liar. Flat out. Just. They lie because they can. They lie because the sky is blue. Like, they will lie about anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, my God. Listen, and anybody who, uh, let me tell you something. As we're going through this, and we're going through these lists, and we're speaking on the fact of, you know, a toxic person, if you're experiencing this, and you may have someone that either coming into your life or either just basically just um we giving you some pointers to just watch out for i'm telling you take notes because you just never know because i honestly also realized that they will really disguise themselves mm -hmm. and again that go that word being that representative they represent themselves as they this amazing person and then as soon as they got that hook on you and reel you in, and I always say this, they digmatize you or pussymatize you, then guess what? You're in because now they could do whatever it is that they want to do to sit there and try to get into and do whatever it is to, to continue to be this toxic person to manipulate you, lie to you, gaslight you. Oh, we that's another thing. <laughs> yeah. That's, and I went there because that's the next one, this gaslighting. You, you know what, sis? I really did not know anything about this word, this word, or about gaslighting until I got into the podcast industry. Because really? like, what is that? Because I don't have these type of people in my life like that. And if I did, that life would be once long ago, and it's no longer now. 
who I'm child, and it's no longer now. And it's like I'm sitting here like, oh wow, I never knew that was even such a word or even that even existed. But you know where you see gaslighting more is well, if, from my perspective, working in the radio business, um, people in the political realm, when their their view differs from yours. And especially when it comes to black and white issues, when we try to tell our experience mm -hmm. from perspective and people are trying to tell us it wasn't like that. Are you black? Did you live that experience? No. So you can't tell me my experience. You know, so that's a, another form of gaslighting that we often overlook as well. <laughs> Wow, because they even sat there and say with the phrase of gaslighting, they say basically they're they do that by um you're making up things and being very dramatic. I don't like a dramatic person. I'm sorry, <laughs> I really don't. I cannot stand a dramatic because I'm a, like, and then I always was told that anything I'm thinking it shows up on my face. But of course, if I'm in the corporate world, I I, I do my best to try to control that but sometimes when you know something just irk you or it's just like oh you it's hard yeah um, when i see a dramatic person i'm like oh this bitch or oh, this dude is just so dramatic <laughs> like you just <laughs> i just can't all right i've had my moments and i'm sure some of my friends or other guys that i've talked to in the past mm -hmm. probably say quabila was very extra and he, there were certain moments that yeah, the tears were flowing, and I was like, I don't understand what's happening to me. <laughs> They're like, God. I can own up to my, that's part of, yeah, I can be a little extra and dramatic with the tears sometimes. <laughs> okay, I cannot. <laughs> also say in regards to a lack of accountability. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. <laughs> but I don't even think that's just the toxic person. I think that's also people who's not willing to take accountability. That's overall anybody that's willing not to take accountability for anything that they, you know, they did or said or they not grown about this shit. To yeah. me, I feel like that's what that is. Um, but I guess it's more into the toxic person that they the toxic person do not take the blame for anything they will make you make sure they don't not only do they display a lack of responsibility for their actions but they also blame others for their bullshit <laughs> you're not putting that on me sir ma'am <laughs> let's talk about another one that i ran across and on this list is called the protector um, and so it basically describes them as someone who comes into your life. Now, they make it seem like they got your best interest at heart. Mm -hmm. But when you start talking about how you want to elevate your life and how you want to grow, um, they kind of want to pull you back. It's like they don't want you to leave them behind or they don't want to see you rise above. Mm. Like, it's it's like that. Um, I hate to say Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde kind of is like, one minute they love and care about you, yeah. and they make you feel like they're on your side. But mm -hmm. the you talk about, well, I'm trying to grow and build and blah, blah, blah. They be like, mm, you know, maybe you should reconsider. Maybe you should, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, we don't need some kind of people. Those are kind of people, they're only out for self, in my opinion. If they don't want to see you grow. And it makes me think about relationships when women are trying to elevate and they have a man in their life who don't want to see them do better because they say that if she started doing better, she going to do better than me. She going to leave me. She going to love me. No, like, or she not going to no longer be able to, needed to depend on me. Thank you. Look, a real woman will always need or, and, or want a man. If she with herself, like I want a man, mm -hmm. but one, I mean, I don't know, but I want one. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. And I feel like I feel like nowadays I do see a lot of the fact that um and I hate to point this to the men, but men show a lot of basically non confidence in when it comes to the woman escalating her success. And it's like I feel like shit, what's what's the point of being you know, insecure or jealous or she not going to need me or need depend on me or she going to make money. 
if y'all living together, you're in the same damn house, it's coming into you anyway. So what is the point? What is the problem? And if you feel like that you're below her or but under her, then that should mo motivate that should motivate each other to win, to elevate, to you know, to go to the next level. Don't look at it as a defeat or a challenge or something where you feel like, oh my God, oh she's making more money than me. <laughs> like now she gonna think she got the ball, the balls in her hands. No, because at the end of the day, real women know their part, know their positions, and know how to play it. You know, oh man, <laughs> this is probably one of them toxic behaviors too. Men who don't want women to make more than them because of everything you said. Um, but it's like, why wouldn't you want your woman to reach her full potential? You know, we have let society tell us the man does this, the woman does that, without deciding for ourselves once we get into our own relationships. This is what we are going to define our relationship by, not what everybody else out there who don't even pay no bills over here said. If you don't pay no bills right here, you can't say shit to me. And that's the thing right there because I don't like that. And I'm saying that that's the old way of the fact that if where the man was always the ones of paying bills and the woman felt like he had the upper hand because he was taking care of the whole household. But I feel like now with being, it about to be 2022, why not split the bill? So and nobody could sit there and say that, oh, you up one hand in me. How about we equal partners in this? This is partnership. We got equal value and equal equal partnership into this relationship or this marriage in this household. So no one could say someone do more than somebody do who. Like I just don't like that. And I really don't. And or if that's not what you whatever because I always say Create your marriage in your relationship that fits for you. Fuck what magazines, TV, commercials, and society say. <laughs> I know that's right. Um, whatever fits for you. If that shoe fits for you and you create any, that uniquely fit shoe for you, then let it be what it be. So we have people saying it's due to the fact that selfish, selfishness. Absolutely. Absolutely. Partnerships, they, that challenge, but strengthens the both of us to become our best selves absolutely and that's what i sit there and that's how i will agree and say and um say that one now <laughs> generation yeah um and here's another thing you know i want to elaborate so we can move on okay so say the woman is making more money well the man's money can pay the bills in the house mm -hmm. and the woman's money can go in a savings in a trust in a whatever you know to continue to build the wealth because we need to move past being rich to being wealthy you know that's a whole other conversation but anyway um yeah <laughs> absolutely and basically also just talking about the fact of you know just the man being you know the you know, trying to be basically the toxic person or, you know, don't want the person, the woman, um, depend on them. But that goes into a toxic person could also be very unsupportive. Mm -hmm. Like, you could, you could come in, but like, babe, I got a promotion. And they be like, oh, great. Yeah. And let, <laughs> it, oh, well. Like, excuse me? Like, <laughs> you, it just can't. I can't. I can't. I'm sorry. And this is the reason why I've been single for so long that I have been until, until now. But <laughs> Everybody ain't able. Because <laughs> I just can't because my thing is, that's why I tell people, and this is why, because I know you do this as well, Q, um, telling ladies in regards, even men, just be patient. Don't rush into a relationship. Just yeah. allow yourself, and it's not even about, okay, we always say allow yourself time to heal, allow yourself time to grow, allow yourself the time to manifest and do whatever else to be able to learn from what you just came from out of and to elevate. However, but that also give you a time to be able to find out your new wants, your new likes, your new dislikes, all that. And it also give you that patience and that time to that right person to come in because I feel like just be time because of the fact that me being single for the past five years 
it gave me that ability and that strength that I could stand in my power to sit there and now have chosen the correct and notice and, and, and I noticed. That's another thing. Notice when you have a good person that step up to you without all that crazy bullshit baggage or like, oh yeah, I had one of those. No, 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 no. That, you, I, I can't stand that. I can't stand that. I really can't. So, <laughs> but just being unsupported, I just don't, I, I think that's crazy because how you not be supportive of someone relation, I mean, situation or goodness, or even just like their promotion, they, their thing, whatever it is, a gift, whatever it is that they happy about. But see, one thing about a toxic person, if you don't support them, oh, they go crazy. They get bent all out of shape. They mm -hmm. get bent and they're like, so you don't believe in me? You don't like what I did? You don't? <laughs> but I just told you about my show, my, you know, this, my, that. And you just kind of like shrug your shoulders at me. It's like, exactly. so I'm giving the same energy you gave. <laughs> exactly. Or they, they didn't even look at, didn't even, fuck the near saying it. You didn't even look me in my eye and say congratulations or you know, I'm proud of you or happy for you. You just said, okay, that's great. Like, <laughs> just, and then also another one is lack of boundaries. Oh. Baby. See, that's what you can't do. And this is, okay, and this is another thing why I put boundaries and standards in place. I don't care who you are. If I'm in a relationship with you or not, family, friend, whoever, I just feel like you need to have those boundaries. But with toxic people, they don't see those boundaries. They don't see boundaries. They cross every border, <laughs> every line. Yep. If they can't. And if you if they see that they can, oh, they will. Yeah. They really will. And then another one is um power dynamics. Hmm. So what they say basically they don't want relationships with mutual respect and um, reciprocate, but rather ones where they have the upper hand and can manipulate the person of the people around them. That's so, controller. <laughs> yes, and that's what you call he's, he's controlling you, girl. That's so. <laughs> um, and you know it's kind of sad that depending on our past. You know, we've talked about this. You and I and many other people have talked about this. I remember talking about this with Teddy last week. Okay, based on what you've been through in your past, you kind of take that on, and then the next person you get with, it's like you make it okay for them to treat you a certain way based on what you've gone through that you haven't healed or allowed yourself to heal from. Say you grew up in an abusive home. You saw mom and dad fight all the time. Or you saw mom with a revolving door of men coming in and out. And so in your mind, as a young girl, you think, well, that's how men are supposed to treat me. Yeah. You know, grow up with that same attitude and belief system. And a man come along, he see that weakness in you. So yeah, he gonna try to manipulate and control and take advantage of that. And so that's why, you know, you talked about healing. It's not about, it's also, okay, it's not just about healing from a past relationship. It's healing from your past. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know so we need to take time and sit with ourselves and I was talking to someone they were like I don't like to sit with my emotions because they don't want to deal with their emotions of things that happened with their grandmother and mother and think you know when they were growing up if you don't ever sit with those emotions they're going to be like little demons that keep popping up at the wrong time mm -hmm. and attack you with different parts of your life and I'm speaking from experience you know so go see a therapist Talk to somebody, do some self work, do some shadow work with yourself because them shadows are not going away. Yeah. So, how you gonna do <laughs> They also will fester inside you, like the really fester, and you will feel that, that negative, um, toxic person because I'm telling you, energy is real. I don't care what nobody say. I, as I get older. I can, I can sense the energy of different people. Yeah. And 
when I feel a nasty, negative energy person, or you, they ain't even got to say nothing, open their mouth. They ain't even got to look at me. They could just walk in the room, and I could be on the other side of the room as soon as they walk in. Yeah. I feel it. I'm sorry. I'm ready to go. Yes, ma'am. Either they leave or I leave. But if they don't leave, I'm leaving. Because it's just, it's, I don't want that around me. And it makes me feel like it's this evil type of energy spirit thing type and it's just it alters my my emotion and, and they said they said that you're supposed to allow people to alter your emotions and your feelings and stuff like that but it will really move you in a di dynamic way where it's like ill and it's like i don't want to be in that area or that environment and if you're a person that's very spiritually in tune with yourself and others around you it can make you physically ill and you know some people don't agree with that but do try it for yourself like and when i say spiritually it's not okay for those that go to church um call upon the holy spirit you know whatever spirit you whatever you practice whatever you believe in get in tune with your spirit self mm -hmm. and allow your spirit to lead and guide you in every day in interactions and yes you can pick up on these toxic people very quickly um you know some of them they play that role so good mm -hmm. you know, they will come in and they will look. So it might take you a little bit. It is going to take you a little bit of time because especially a, a toxic person is really, really good at being toxic. And they know they know the beginning stages of covering up to be able to end up getting and sucking you in. Then you they go, like you said, until you end up really seeing. Because like only a person could wear a mask for a certain amount of time. You can't out you can't wear a mask forever. So at some point them the pieces of that mask are gonna start falling off and you're gonna start to see traits and you're gonna start seeing telltale signs and you're gonna start you're gonna start witnessing and seeing and you're gonna be like, Oh yeah. And this is what I don't like when people do see these things. Why do you stay? Why do you stay put? Why do you think in any way, hell, shape, or form that you gonna change? You going to do something different. Oh, you going to make something else happen. You going to rock this person world to make them a different person. It doesn't happen like that. Yeah. You have to want that. They have to do that. You can't. So why would you lie yourself and put that responsibility on yourself that, that they ain't got shit to do with you, honestly, because they was like that before they even met you. Yeah. And they like that while you with them. So why the hell are you sitting there now thinking you about to put all this responsibility by you about to change all this and do all this and make all this a difference when no, you can't change nobody. And that's what I'm saying. Like it, it's okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, kings and kings, gods and goddesses, that it's okay when you see a red flag, a yellow flag, when you see shit ain't working, when you see that if someone crossed their boundaries with you, crossed the line, or when you see that a person has not or not meeting your standards and not agreeing with your standards, it's okay to leave. Yes. That Listen, to me, I feel like that's a telltale sign of God saying, listen, I'm going to show you my daughter, and, um, and when I show you, you need to leave. Now, yes. hey, that's up to you. Now, I will say this kind of you know, jumping into the other part of the topic is, you know, giving them too many passes. You know, sometimes, and I'm going to speak for myself, and people in my circle who know me, they know I'm the kind, sweet, go along and get along. I want to see the good in everybody, you know. And so that's why I have given people too many passes in my life. And I'm very passive at times, and I don't speak up for myself and stand up for myself when I need to. I let stuff just kind of sit and then I take it on and then I go home and cry about it, you know, instead of like, uh, -uh this is what I saw. This is what you did. You know, so I'm, I need this too for myself. I need to be more of a grown up. I need to be more of a, see, I'm afraid though, when I start standing up a lot more, I'm going to flip the, the switch and become like, unlike. <laughs> I'm what, so what, that people ain't going to like you? Yeah, cause girl, don't worry about that. <laughs> girl, don't worry about that. Oh hell no. <laughs> cause I know me, my mouth is is slick and it's sarcastic and it's 
Like I'll be having stuff right on the tip of my tongue. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to say that today. There, if people knew how the stuff they've been say they've been saved from. Mm-hmm. Oh goodness, <laughs> yeah. So, Eventually, I let it out. So when you don't say it, do you feel like it's like it's a, it's suffocating you? Because like if I don't express myself, and if I don't, because I always been outspoken, blunt, straightforward. So when I'm giving you what you guys meeting me and knowing me, this ain't shit new. I've been doing this since I've been eight four five years old and my family could tell you that so because i know when i try not to be as blunt because some of my family especially my grandmother god rest her soul she be like Crimea, your mouth her eyes are open up like Crimea, your mouth <laughs> like she got for me to shut the fuck up like like just hold back and not and i realize when i try to be that because her, you know for her and I understand because my, you know, our grandparents are old fashioned, you know. Mm-hmm. But I, it, it, when I realized I seen myself doing that, I felt like me not really saying what I wanted to say and needing to say. And if I wasn't being me, I feel like that it was eating me up inside. It was suffocating me. And I felt like it was a lot of negative that it was just holding because I was holding it. And I'm like, I'm about to like, I'm about to go. <laughs> so do you, do you ever feel that way? It's like a, it's like a lump in your chest, like physical almost. It it can turn into physical discomfort, and I know that I have the potential to be a verbal assassin, and I, I guess I'm the type of person also. I don't want to cut somebody so deep in their spirit that I can't take it back and apologize, and I know that's not doing me any good because I'm letting these toxic people. Mm-hmm continue to be who they are and making them think and feel that what they're doing is okay and it's not fair to me exactly. so you know who i'm speaking to out there who else is like that who um anyone else has been like me i'm open for tips and pointers on how to find that balance on putting people in their place but still maintaining some uh, come to our <laughs> Ty and Sharice will help you out <laughs> oh yes we will <laughs> And you would think, me being from the South, I would have that eloquent way of telling somebody, bless your heart, mm-hmm. and, you know, <laughs> and let them know exactly what I mean. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, you could be very blunt and honest. You can. So what I learned by me being blunt and honest compared to me being blunt and honest when I was 15 compared to me now being 40 is the fact that my delivery. Okay. <laughs> Delivery before was, I don't give a fuck how I deliver it to you. I don't care if I cut you, stabbed you, took out your lung, threw it to your, melted it to your family, and didn't give a fuck. I didn't care. But yeah. now, I, it's like I do it more of an approach of a delivery. However, I could go back to that I don't give a fuck delivery as well. So she's always there. Okay. But I, always put in mind it's not what you saying it's how you saying it and it's how you deliver it that people will get the message and at the same time i also come from a background in a family where we didn't it was no hose bar like my grandmother was that way of the fact that she she had her no hose bar moment but she always more of the south was like girl shut your mouth but <laughs> She needed to say what she needed to say. Oh, we used to be like, Ooh, <laughs> you know, so I, and then my grandfather, he's a Navy, no hose bar, vodka drinking, did hold his tongue, what? Alabama from the backwoods. So we, I, we grew up with that. So me not being able to speak, I, I, I would die. It, that ball would kill me. I would, it would literally kill me. Like, oh. I would get a message on Instagram, but like probably had passed away today for not being able to say what she wanted to say. Oh my God. Like, seriously, because I, so you could do, it's, it's self-control of expressing yourself without cutting somebody so deep and being so vicious. You know, just having the sympathy, empathy, and also the delivery behind it. And still saying, you could call somebody a straight bitch in a nice way. You can. Yeah. You can. You can curse them out in a nice way. And listen, and Ty, she's very good at that shit. (laughs) (laughs) 
So trust me, you need some lessons. You got three people from three different area codes could teach you. <laughs> well, look, ladies, I'm hitting y'all up. Um, because I want to go through a list real quick of some some characteristic, other characteristics of toxic people. And then I guess we can look at, you know, each person can examine themselves. Why do we give these people so many passes? Mm. Hypocritical, can't take criticism, never miss to being wrong, play mind games. You talked about extremely manipulative. They always have to win. Uh, tendency to lie, self-serving. They love drama, can't be trusted. Mm -hmm. um, they expect blind loyalty from you, but they can't give it back. Twist everything you say. Won't take no for an answer. Back, back to the, they don't know them healthy boundaries. Um, uh, stonewalls you and gives you silent. And I have seen that too. They give you the silent treatment. Oh, and, I don't. Oh, Lord. I'm, now, I'm, personally. I'm going to out and cut you off when you do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you know what? You good. You can stay right there in your silence. <laughs> And then, you know, they use their finances to manipulate you. They're jealous. And then they want special treatment and they bully you. Like, mm -hmm. all have encountered somebody like that. And sometimes it's not so direct in your face. Some yeah. people with, um, like an abuser, they don't come right out. No. You. They kind of build you up and love you up and, you know, get you in. And then they start, you oh, know. about that. They find something to blame on you to make make it seem like you were the reason they hit you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. I could end up adding to that list encouraging codependency, Ooh. fighting drama, um, insincere apologies. Yeah. Um, and it's just it's just crazy because <laughs> you just even said you you hit the the nail on the head was they will end up having you think and put as your fault, like, um, like abuser. They'll build you up, love on you. And then once, I keep telling you, once they digmatize you and got you in, it's a wrap. Yeah. It's a wrap. Because now it's like you in. And it's like now, especially because what they do is they mold you and build you to either needing to, to depend on them, needing them, you know, wanting them. Like, if there's nothing you can do or move without them, you know, mm -hmm. And then in regards to that, it's like, and then make everything that they do have you feel like you did it. Or that's the reason why you did or you said what you said to me or you do it to me because it's my fault. Oh, no. And that's why I tell people you have, to, you have to know you. You have to know yourself. You have to have standards and boundaries because those standards, standards and boundaries put in place for a reason to so the fact is that you would X out people and unnecessary people like toxic people, bullshit people, people with waste of, waste of space and waste of time. You would X them out of your life or to not, for them not to come in your life when you have standards and boundaries in place. So it's like standards and boundaries do the job for you that you don't, the elimination for you that you don't have to eliminate because you be like, okay, don't need that person. And now, like I tell people, it's about the quality, not the quantity. That's why my, my circle is very small because even though my circle is small, but my circle hold whole motherfucking lots of weight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, so, and then was the next question that you have posed in regards of us, why we choose toxic people, you know, I, I say it gotta be, it gotta be something with us. It gotta be something within a person. It gotta be something because either it's still familiar because it's how we grew up, what we seen. Um, you know, cause I, t I, like I tell people, I don't care what you do with your children. And even as us being kids, we didn't care what our parents told us. We was watching what they was doing. So if they did had a boyfriend who hit them and if that was what was around you. So you thinking like, oh, well, that's what love is. If you sit there and your, your parent had a toxic ass people coming in their life, you'd be like, oh, well, that's what a good friend is. You know, so you, you basically go mimic and what you grew up around until you notice and you get that therapy to end up breaking down those layers and breaking you down to realize that's not the right way. Yes. Um, it's almost like we allow the toxic people to 
make us question ourselves and like well did i do something wrong or maybe i was the it's like yeah we let them get in our head or depending on who we are mm -hmm. we deal with them for too long because we don't want to be lonely we don't want to lose that person because we think they are more beneficial in our lives whether it's a man woman your job whatever the case whoever whatever we keep them around because we feel like if we let go of them we're going to be missing out on something mm -hmm. and really by holding on to them we are missing out on more on the other side by keeping them around that energy is blocking all the other positive things that could be coming into our life but again it's easier said than done to get out of those situations yeah. and like what Timo said, we got to stop letting sex dictate our decision making. When it comes to men and women or whatever, whoever you sleep with, um, when it comes to those kind of interaction, intimate interactions, we do need to stop letting sexual intimacy, <laughs> physical intimacy, um, get in the way of our thinking and feeling and, and how we feel about ourselves. Exactly. But that's another thing, self-esteem. I was looking at some uh, more stuff as I was researching. Um, lack of confidence. M tell ourselves, I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm. Maybe this is what I deserve. I don't know. You know, we we doubt ourselves. No. <laughs> yeah. Do so we do doubt ourselves? And then our past is what also play a part in it. Especially if you have people in your life, or you grew up in a traumatic um, traumatic situation where you feel like, oh, this is what I deserve. This is, you know, maybe I don't deserve more. And I think I forgot who I was talking to. And they say they was in a relationship where they felt like just because of their childhood and a traumatic childhood, they felt like, oh, this is all I could get. This, or this is the best I could get. And that's another thing that people feel like that's because, oh, well, this is all I could get. Here she is. This is what I feel like this is the top of the barrel that I could go as far as I can on this on this ride. And it's like, no, because, again, it goes back to confidence and self-esteem. If you elevate your confidence and your self-esteem and then tap into knowing who you are to your power and then creating the standards and boundaries, I'm telling you, even if they do have good sex, you wouldn't even give a fuck about that because you'll be like, nope. I know who I am. I can get that from somebody better who gonna treat me better. That's not toxic. That ain't a full of shit. And that's not drama. And that's no know, know my worth and see my worth because I know my worth. So yeah. if you step step into those dynamics of yourself, that will not play. Those things won't play a role because you will you will see it. You will you eliminate it. And again, go back to what you say that it's easier said than done, which it is. And that's why I say that everything that we do and just like women who see, you know, me and you in regards to say like, oh, then they're so confident, and secure about themselves and how they speak and this and that and this and that. But at the same time, it took us time to get here. Yeah. And took a process that we got onto the ride and we trusted the journey that was going on and we trusted the process. And like I say, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Yes, right. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I uh, ran across a quote, well, a quote or a statement. Um, it says, stay away from people who always consider you expressing how you feel as you arguing or being extra. It's called gaslighting, going back to that term. Toxic people do that so they don't have to take accountability for their own behavior. Mm -hmm. And I know I can be extra sometimes, but I'm not all the time. So, you know, I'm not a... Yeah. I'm not one of those that cry at the blink of an eye, kind of... It was just... It, there were a few moments I had in my life and I can admit to. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. <laughs> so, anyway... I think we've all been there, you know what I'm saying? Especially if it was very overwhelming and emotional, absolutely, we was there. See, when I say dra drama or dramatic person, I'm not that dramatic person where it's like, I've never been the woman to go key a car, bust yeah. out windows, and to slash his highest. I just don't see myself doing that. Now, yeah. I've been with friends and went with friends and watched them was the watch out for them, but I wasn't doing that shit. Um, that's just not in me to do. Like I, I'm just not that person. I just feel like, what is the, what is the point? Let I'm going to sit in my feelings, 
and I'm going to feel the pain. And then once I finish crying, boo-hooing, and getting it out and cleansing it out of my system, then I'm going to stand up, wash my face, take a good shower, get myself together, read a good book, and pour into myself, and we're going to start working on the process of healing. But for me, the key this car and bust out his windows and slash his tires, I feel like, is what is that doing for me? Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Yeah. So, so look, people, we all talk about, well, now we know the characteristics of, of toxic people. Now it's time to either raise the rent or serve them their eviction notice because, like you say, it's about to be 2022. We can't keep going like this. We just can't. <laughs> I like it. Word is void. I like <laughs> Raise the rent or either serve them if they are eviction notice. I like that. Oh, look. We got to get them out of our lives um, by choice or by force. I mean, whatever it takes. <laughs> um, that's why I say raise the rent. So either they're going to choose to leave or um, you are evicted. Yeah, you got to <laughs> oh. And I do love the way how my sister ended up putting it, which I always say, listen, my way I put it is, if you're not going to sit there and continue to let sour milk or expired milk to sit in your refrigerator because you know it's no longer good, why are you going to continue being in um, expired relationships or situations or have expired friendships? For what? There's no need because only thing that milk is going to do is continue to go past this expiration date and get more sour and spoil you. It's not going to revert back to a new date. It's not going to get to a good, it's not going to be a good, it's never going to get good for you to drink again. All it's going to do is start raking up the refrigerator and start getting more messier than the it passes expiration date. So you, you eventually have to open up the damn car, carton and pour the shit out. So real story. What's going to happen is it's going to turn to a cheese-like texture. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> so you're going to have to throw the whole carton away. Just, just, yeah, because you don't so. you get to pull it out no more because when it gets that, you just got to throw the whole thing away. Because eventually, even before it gets there, you you know how you put the milk and throw it in the sink, you know, got it in the sink, but then you pour the carton out in the, uh, the trash. But with that point, at that point, you want to say... <laughs> it's stiff. It's, it's stiff, cheese like, and I'm just trying to throw the whole thing away. So, before I even get to that, just end up just draining it out in the sink and just throw the carton away. And like, don't feel bad the fact that you have to evict someone from your life, or you have to serve someone an eviction notice, or you have to throw and spoil your milk out down the drain and throw the carton away. At the end of the day, everybody come in your, your life for a reason, season, and a lifetime. And people going to show you their reason, their season, and if they are your lifetimers. And when you realize that it's okay for them to have come and shown you who they are provided in your life and given whatever lesson, blessing, or yeah. teaching that they're supposed to and be gone. And as I always say, listen, a branch don't always stay on the tree, right? Eventually, them leaves yeah. On that branch gonna fall through each and every season. Yes. Do that tree bend down and say, Oh, the branch fell off of me. I gotta pick it back up and then reattach it. No, because guess what's gonna happen next season? A mm -hmm. new branch gonna grow on that tree. That's right. <laughs> so I just hope that this message that we have basically in this conversation had gained some insight to everyone, had opened up people eyes had either just rattled and shook and we at least move one or two people that's basically our mainly job that we do yeah. it's just becoming podcasters because i know i can't change the whole world but if i could change it one person at a time i did my job that's right <laughs> other than that that was my closing argument in regards of just you know just real realize your worth um yeah. know your worth Know the fact that you are viable, and if you don't have, you have lack of self-esteem and confidence at this point. Take some time and be able to gain. And I understand it's easier said than done, but I do know. Know that you're talking to a woman who's been there before. Know you're talking to a woman and speaking a woman that's speaking to you, been through the process. I have not always been as so confident, stood in my power, my femininity, my womanhood. I've been there before. But now, because I've grown within myself, I know who I am. I know my worth. I know my value. And yes, I put standards and boundaries. And I 
about the numbers is about the quality to me that there's now a whole different person that stands before you and that's speaking to you. So in regards to that, just know the fact that it's a process. Take one day, one second, maybe one minute and one hour a day at a time. No one said this is a race, it's a marathon. And enjoy the journey and the process while you're on it. And what's your closing, sis? All right. For me, and this is also coming from a personal place. Hey, Teddy. Um, forgive yourself. No matter what you've done or what you've been through in life, forgive yourself um, because you don't deserve to be treated any kind of way by people who don't respect you. Um, usually toxic people, they don't even like themselves. So what makes you think they're going to really like and respect you? So forgive yourself so that you have more power to deal with them and recognize them when they come into your life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I definitely second agree on that one. And listen, so tell the people which you got coming up, where they could find you and you know, where they in the where they could go and support you at. All right. So I'm not on a regular schedule right now because I'm not at home. But I you will see me pop up on other people's platforms right now. Um I do have my audio on Anchor and Spotify, Google, all the, the major podcast platforms. I have some videos you can still go check out on YouTube. But you can also catch me on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter with some empowering messages in between session uh, segments and stuff. So I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, my queen sister, for inviting me into your space. The cues have taken over on Monday night. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well overdue and well needed and deserved but not only just the people and the people who will listen later but just for ourselves as well and I just appreciate and thank you for just accepting my invitation and you actually being um, able to take time for yourself to get yourself in a healthy space and healthy mind, physical and emotional for you was able to actually because when you when, before when I reached out I was like nope take care of yourself we got this always <laughs> You, you, we, we listen, it's going to be another time, another day, another place, and here we go. And I'm just glad that you was able and insightfully to be able to actually accept my invitation and be able to show your amazing, beautiful days on the screen with me. And so the cues took over Monday night <laughs> on Instagram Live. And listen, for those that basically um, haven't yet, make sure you guys go support my girl Q. Listen, support is free, as I always say, is 0 0.000 cents. <laughs> so, <laughs> and you guys always know where you can find me at. And I'll be here back here again on Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time live on Instagram for another show, which I have with this amazing YouTube video blogger, LeBron. By the name of Lamir Perry, he's a uh, he's a, a just a outgoing, um, smart, bright young man um, that's taking over YouTube, and you guys will end up seeing him across your YouTube channels very, very, very soon. So, but of course, you could girls and you ladies and gentlemen, you can find me on Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, Twitch, Twitter, everywhere basically now. <laughs> And then also my audio, you could be able to listen to my audio if you don't want to hear my lives. I mean, see my videos as well as on YouTube, as well as Facebook, but it's more on YouTube than anything. Um, but you could listen to my audio on all streaming platforms, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Apple, and all that good stuff. So you guys make sure whoever came over from the Q Spot podcast, go support your girl from Pillow Talk with the T and Pillow Talk with the T fam. You make sure you guys go support my girl Q from the Q Spot um, um, podcast as well. So, and listen, again, love you, girl. Love, love you, my sister. Appreciate you. And you know I'm always here when you need me. And we got to do this again. <laughs> So I wait when I get home in my own setting. Yeah, I'm going to be ready to rock and roll. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely.
So you guys, we'll see you at another time, another place, and another amazing, beautiful conversation. As I always say before I close, if no one told you that they love you, know that we do love you. And as always, continue to be great, elevate, and to transform yourself to the best version of yourself. And remember, you're not who you were yesterday of who you are today. You guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay clean, and take care of each other. Good night. Bye.